speakers here. Uh, so each speaker will speak like a five minutes. Then we will move to the Q and A session. So without further ado, let me uh, ask uh, invite Professor Ning Ningke, a very pro a very famous professor from the UNS. Uh, w Australia. He has outstanding contributions in academic and uh, uh, education in the remote sensing and the GIS. So please, uh, Professor Kerr. All right. Uh, thank you, Professor Kerr, for your introduction. And, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining our session. Uh, my uh, talk here, brief talk, is uh, near real time observation of major disasters. Obviously, um, we won't be able to talk about all major disasters, but I will say selected three. So first, I will talk about which part and flood, and of course, uh, hopefully, you will still remember there was a major earthquake back in 2008 in China. Um, as it turns out, a lot of people think Australia might um, not pay sort of such attention to major disasters. We actually got a fair share of disasters, which flops in particular. Uh, you might have noticed that the last bullet moment over here, yeah. it used to be the worst disaster in Australia uh, back in 2000. But uh, since, uh, you know, about a couple of years ago, 2019 and uh, 2020, we actually had the worst disaster, worse than this one that I was uh, about to talk about. Okay, so basically half a year, uh, we just had smoke here, so it's that bad, all right? But this particular year, we've got 173 there. And a lot of fires, as you can tell from this. So, yeah. I want to highlight that. You know, when it comes to uh, monitoring measure disasters, uh, international collaboration is very important. And hence, uh, this um, DO uh, community and so on. So you can tell multiple uh, parties actually did uh, this work. We used the brand and the uh, survive back then, a uh, channel survive as uh, J1B. And uh, for those shower parts, you can just see some very small, small parts, but otherwise, you know, between those two far fields, you can tell the difference as well. Still uh, out of control over here, but over here, they have to be contained. Okay? Um, the reason why we want to do that in near real time is we actually feed it to quite fine here. Over here, air prey is very powerful, but uh, unless you have very high temperatures, and it's not supposed to uh, detect the fire early, okay? and that's why uh, my uh, talk here. Moving on to a slightly different uh, type of disaster, this is back in 2011. Flood is also a major disaster in Australia. Okay, so as you can tell, the news featured by the BBC that was uh, the river. Uh, before the flood, and that's at the peak of the flood uh, in January. Uh, so you can tell how massive is the flood. If you can see the scale of it, you can only do that in space. So once again, you want to have that as quick as possible. The tension can actually uh, you know, evacuate from people, get people out of the flood. At that time, we actually managed to have. Uh, to get hold of a uh, ground receiving station, the uh, Italian Space Agency who managed to deliver uh, within 29 minutes, so basically, so I managed to capture to um, information flood intelligence on the ground. So it's quite a uh, We have time for discussions that we have to talk about what's the implications, why we uh, um, are so addicted to, to try to do things. The last major disaster I will cover, uh, and said it was uh, actually back in 2008. You can't imagine that. It's so, so many years ago. Okay? But of course, a lot of the uh, stories back then are still fresh. Uh, it's pretty massive, so again, I won't spend too much time for you know, how much uh, damage, but I want to focus on the stuff I have inside of it. So we use that. A couple of supplies, one from the uh, European Space Agency, indicated by the uh, open line over here, and the other is actually by uh, with, uh, the uh, supplies from Japan. So, you so, so. can tell even with the supply, you do struggle. You have to have multiple tracks and then try to stitch them together. We know that um, uh, 
doesn't work really well because in that case you have to wait for an on button in this case here, where she will have to uh, use very much a whole month from the, the whole 400 going in the uh, form. So once again, we do have time to speculate about that. And it's an area that I think we have a lot of potential. My team here at the US is available. Um, just a lot of automation, uh, because it's automation that will uh, um, deliver the time critical information. So I guess that's pretty much my last point over here. And of course, with uh, the satellite constellation, we are getting much closer to you know, uh, intelligence and major resources in near real time. So with that, I want to thank everyone for your, your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, exactly five minutes. Thank you very much. Oh, That's a great. Thank you. Uh, now let's invite uh, Mr. Metz, Chris Hanson from the DHI for us, Denmark. And uh, Metz, he is a seasonal geographer and uh, also the project and the business manager. So Metz, please sit. Okay. Thank you for the introduction of the call. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you can see my slide. Are they working all right? Yes, you? yes. Okay, they're working. Good. Uh, yes, at that time, uh, my name is Matt Christensen. I come from DHI Graph in Denmark, part of the DHI Group, which is an engineering uh, consultancy company specialized in water resources. Um, and in line with that, uh, I also want to do um, to introduce what we do uh, as part of the remote sensing branch of DHI. Uh, we work with satellite data, and as part of the DHI group with the focus on water resources, we do a lot uh, related to, to flood monitoring, which is also pretty touched upon by Professor Gabe before. Uh, but um, we do. Um, mainly two different types of flood related products. We do the operational and near real time uh, products, which uh, were also mentioned before. Uh, and of course, that's highly critical for authorities, uh, emergency agencies, uh, modelers that need calibration data, all this uh, real time insight into to the scope of a disaster. And then we also do what we call um, surface so water frequency, and that's basically a compilation of long time series of satellite data indicating the frequency of uh, water at a pixel level in the image. So it provides an indication of flood hazards that allows authorities to, to mitigate uh, and prevent uh, future hazards from, from happening by getting that uh, geospatial insight into the path uh, tendencies, and it's specifically why. Um, yeah, I won't have much time to go into detail here. Obviously, five minutes is short, so uh, there's, there's going to be a few slides. I'm going to go quickly past here, but uh, just saying this is a basic topic. We use the optical data if we can. That's the most accurate way to, to map floodings, but we supplement that with uh, solar data data, which obviously has the benefit that it can penetrate the cloud. And in most situations where we have floodings, or in many, we do have excessive cloud cover. Uh, so the fire imagery allows us to get inside on the ground regardless of, of the cloud cover. So that's our main uh, instrument for the real uh, new real time flood monitor. Also want to touch upon this uh, near real time aspect a little bit uh, because Mark say the, the earlier you can get into to the to the to the monitoring cycle uh, the more real time you can get uh, and this is how we ambitious vision the operational flood monitoring work look that we work with, um, where you actually have a a, um, a weather forecast or some other indication of a flood event that's going to happen in the near uh, future. And then we have the ability to, uh, to task a satellite uh, to cover a specific area at a certain time. And then we know for sure that we can get uh, an overview of the extent of the flooding uh, when it happens at the peak of the event. Uh, and this is uh, just a brief example of, of how it works. Uh, in situation from Denmark, we have an indication that a uh, storm flood was going to be uh, happen over the weekend. We triggered a passing of satellite, and uh, ultimately we got a map that indicated the areas that was uh, hit by the disaster. And all of this happens in, in less than 48 hours from activation of the satellite passing until you actually have a map of the um, of the event. 
this is a little video uh, of uh, a major flood event we uh, we covered in in Mozambique a few years ago. Some of you might remember the cyclone like Idai uh, that caused tremendous uh, impact throughout uh, some region Africa, particularly in Mozambique. And this is our work, really translation of the satellite radar image, and then you get this precise indication of the of the area that was impacted by the floods. Another example here where we uh, held the CARES National um, as part of their emergency response efforts in Vietnam last, last fall. Uh, we covered the major floodings in, in northern Vietnam that they used to inform their um, actions on the ground. And uh, just to illustrate also the scalability of, of, the, of satellites here uh, and the potential. Uh, we mapped last year, there was national level covered uh, flooding in Denmark, um, and Denmark is about 34,000 square kilometers. And we mapped the collective extent of the floodings in all of Denmark in less than two days. So it really shows the potential here and the scalability of the of satellite based flood mapping. So just for the frequency, uh, as I already uh, said, uh, it's a multi temple composite. Uh, it, it's what we call a collection of satellite data for it could be the last summer season or the last three years or the last few months. And it provides an indication of the frequency of um, of the of surface water at a equal level. So here is the uh, all of Thailand covered and it basically allows us to get insight into what is the frequency of the of the flooding events, or at least uh, the frequency of inundation events uh, in, this, in different parts of the, uh, of the country. Another example here also just to illustrate the potential of Sentinel data that's our main workforce, uh, and really get insight into the, to the sort of level of detail that you can get from, the, from those uh, clinical Sentinel um, satellites here. Really um, high detail level here at this coastal area of Denmark where you can get insight into uh, into the size or expand as well and just one of the uh, coastal boundaries. And to wrap up, uh, just wanted to say that uh, the last year we, we introduced our metrics, which uh, is our interface for all our uh, flood related products. Uh, and here you can go in and play a little bit of the, around with the data sure. and sure. data on flood hazard and flood extent uh, and also digital, digital elevation models. So uh, I'm very good to tune into that. Um, Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Metz. Okay, so it's my turn. Uh, my name is uh, Tao Guo. I'm with the uh, HiSet Information Technology uh, China. And I'm sharing the screen right now. Can you see my screen? Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, as uh, Professor Gray and uh, Mr. Metz mentioned, uh, satellite observation applications quite becomes very popular. So, as an uh, industrial, we do think there are some gaps between the, uh, what they call, technology and the applications. That's the reason. We develop the cloud-based SaaS, try to fill the gap between the application and the, the uh, users. So I will go very fast or quickly. So the most sensing applications uh, become competitive, and but the gap is still there. The threshold the barriers between the application is still very big. And right now, because a lot of uh, applications uh, is based on cloud, what we're thinking is how can we use uh, the cloud to uh, load down the, the barriers for the remote sensing technologies. That's a, that's the a reason, the, uh, what I call motivation with our technology. This is a, a milestone with our uh, service, we call the PIE, Pixel Information Expert. This is the software we develop. First, we try to put the data on the cloud 
then we also gradually, gradually uh, upload, upload the, the what they call uh, computing capacities with the data. And so, uh, later we also add the knowledge, the, the modules of knowledge in, with the cloud to facilitate the users to use uh, more sensing technology. This is uh, our policies, our uh, philosophies of our software. Now we are evolving from the software to the engine, we call the PI engine. So all data, all a computing resource, storage resource are available. User is no longer, users are not, no longer to, uh, what do you call, to search the data and also find the computing resources. But all behind the hand, this is our strategies. So I'm showing some typical applications. This is for risk by monitoring systems. It's operational, already operational in China. We're monitoring the uh, forest by using the satellite data. Once we find the five points, we report to the forest authorities through the IoT networks. So immediately users, they, they can know uh, where the fires happen. This is uh, already in the operation. And the same thing, Actually, same methodology has been applied for the air pollution monitoring. This is uh, uh, in a city in China. We monitor the, the air uh, qualities using the sensing data, combining with the data from the ground. If the, something happens, uh, pollution happens, immediately we can know and uh, send a report to the users authorities immediately. And also, like the building changes using remote sensing, this is uh, could be very useful for disaster after the earthquake. We can uh, immediately uh, detect the damage the buildings. And uh, illegal mining remote sensing monitoring. This actually uh, for the disaster management for the like the landslides. This is also uh, the same uh, methodology you can use. But this is for the uh, mining side. And another is for the uh, industrial applications, like the uh, agriculture planting guidance, and also extractor urban road systems. All these uh, applications follow the same uh, strategies. We uh, provide data, provide, provide data, provide the computing capacities, and also providing the, the what they call the methods, modules, knowledge together, all together. So using users is just to uh, have all the resource available under their hand. They can immediately to focus on the problem solving. Okay, so the, the conclusion is the cloud-based remote sensing SaaS was served uh, in the nature disaster management and uh, reduce the application barriers for the public. In the meantime, we will also create the uh, venues for the end users. So thank you very much, very fast, very sh uh, short. Okay. okay, so we have uh, another 10 minutes. Let's see, we open for the questions. Anybody who want to ask questions, please. Okay, so if nobody asks, let's uh, uh, what do you call uh, free to talk. So, Professor Ger, if you have any things to add, please. So, your mic is muted. Okay. Uh, I actually have a question about the, the high end. Obviously, I'm working with the local government and people like that. So, what's the kind of partnership? Do they just sell the uh, system to them, or you, you try to uh, uh, operate that? Uh, actually, the, the 
basic strategy for the engines, we try to sell the service to the users, including the, the uh, authorities or the government. They don't need to care about the data and also care about the, the, the method or computing facilities. They just uh, send us what they want, demands. Then we solve the, the, the demands, provide the result to the uh, of course, uh, the high quality results. That is always challenges. All right, thanks. For that. Yes. Similar question from Matt. You know, the uh, services that you are providing, uh, the examples you, you uh, mentioned in your brief talk, what, what's uh, the uh, nature of that? Is it just a public uh, good or you, you are doing that on a commercial basis? Yeah, thanks for the question, Professor Grant. Um, I mean, yeah, we're a commercial company, um, so um, so we yeah, we do it on a commercial basis uh, for sure. But uh, we're also a non-profit uh, organization, so uh, everything we earn goes into uh, to research and development, basically, uh, and that allows us to uh, to uh, to optimize uh, the work so and to give it further into um, into this work. Um, but that being said, we also do. Um, Work with humanitarian organizations that we do provide them with uh, free data uh, on a case by case basis, uh, specifically when a big event happens in a third world country. So, the both can be for example, uh, a few years ago we, we provided that for free. And, uh, also, for care international last, last year, they approached us and asked if we could help them with their interest in, uh, in northern Vietnam. So, uh, I'd say the product is, is commercial by nature, but uh, we also provide it uh, on uh, the uh, goodwill if the uh, humanitarian organizations or emergency services need it for uh, some action here and now. Well, I like uh, particularly a number yeah, you uh, introduced, you know, 48 hours from uh, asking the, the stuff like to uh, intelligence some of the answers. That's uh, very impressive. I remember not long ago, it's still a week or two. So, do you have a feeling that actually we need more satellites? I think there are so many satellites right now, and it's hard to keep track of. Uh, and I'd say the opportunities today are much larger than they they were just five, ten years ago. Uh, satellites have progressed massively, and um, I'd say there are so many commercial data sources that provide. I mean, planet within centuries of our day, whether it's ICI and other two stars, they have provided that, that promises to deliver star data on an hourly basis on a global level. So the opportunity for that, and I'd say the 48 hours uh, that dependent on, on the data availability, we can process the data in, in less than an hour or two. So uh, with more data we have available and we have more data. Today, than we've ever had with the opportunity, so even greater than before. So, uh, yeah, for sure. Maybe a request uh, for to uh, Professor Guo. We know that of course, China has a lot of space activities, not the space station, and so And uh, more related to our session here is actually uh, the most satellites. Is it true that uh, both the government and the private sector are chipping in terms of launching more remorses and stuff like for the purpose of uh, disaster mitigation? Yes, yes, I, I, yes, I believe so. As a Professor Gus, uh, also in his topic, uh, the, the timing for the remote monitoring the disaster is very critical. And also Mr. Metz was mentioned the increase the number of the satellites would be the solution. Uh, that is true for the government and also the private sector in China. We are uh, what do you call planning our satellites. My company, uh, private company, we are also planning our set own satellites constellations. From next year, we are going to launch some very high resolution sub, uh, satellites, and the purpose is uh, to provide. Uh, the, the data, especially for the terrain monitoring, terrain uh, data is in very high resolution, high quality. And this could be very good uh, what is it, resource for the management of the uh, disasters. Yes, exactly, Professor Kerr, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for that. And uh, any questions from the, our participants in the, this session? So please, uh, uh, free to speak. Okay. And uh, okay. So let's 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 uh, free session. Let's. Uh, and uh, I just want to add a little bit more about our uh, engines. We are building the platform. I'm not doing the promotion, commercial promotion actually is not. Actually, we are making the platform and uh, the purpose is to try to build up the uh, build up the communities. So for the commercial partners, we can provide service for our platform for non-commercial users and the communities. They also can uh, benefit from this platform. They can contribute free data. They also contribute for the like the what methodology modules knowledge uh, knowledge together on this platform. We can share. We can share all the information resources together. This is actually basic of our platform. So the source right now from our side, so we provide some commercial service to the uh, specific end uh, uh, users. But we also encourage the people get involved, get engaged in this uh, platform, so we can use our knowledge data to contribute the for the bad disaster management. This kind of public interest. This is uh, one of our uh, what they call uh, strategies for the uh, this SaaS platform. Yes, we have still have three minutes to go, so please. Hello, uh, may I may I come in? Sure, sure, please. Hello. Hello, <laughs> how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you once again. Yeah, so, uh, since uh, we are talking about uh, disaster and out of the waste, and you must be aware that last uh, this week and last week, Nepal has been facing a lot of uh, parts and slides due to disaster and we have been struggling hard to get access to certain data. Uh, one of the reasons is also the top cover, which is pretty clear. With the only uh, big uh, faster data is the planning data, which has been very good in terms of the time it is. But again, the cloud has been one of the millions of data. Another event that happened is so, so there was a lake from in Chinese part. And because of the uh, landslide, the lake was damp and damp there, and it had potential hazard in the downstream in Nepal. So there has been a lot of this communication with the Chinese counterparts uh, between the government levels. And if you don't know about it, it is an intergovernmental organization working on this uh, eight countries. And we also wanted to assist our governments, our local uh, uh, departments, in terms of uh, the satellite data. So it will be good to connect with you all and then see like how we can make it work in a systematic process when such things happen in communities because this is always very different. So Mustafa uh, already mentioned about his uh, platform. So we would like, like to see like how we can have access to these kind of networks as well as at the same time work collectively to build capacity. So that, that even if certain data is available, we don't find people the government departments who are able to use those data properly. I think uh, it would be good to have a full effort in this regard and see how we can all contribute in terms of uh, uh, making people better capable of uh, working on these areas for the author of the best activities. Thank you. That is my point that because it's very relevant and very timely from our uh, perspective. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Professor. Ranjo, he is from the EC mode. Yes, and uh, uh, okay, so we are running out of time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Ge, Mr. Metz, and also area participants. So we already have uh, our email and the contact information on our slides. If you have uh, interest, please uh, free to contact with us. We will share with you our ideas. So let's keep in touch. So, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.